was born in Armenia, but my parents moved to Belgium when I was only three years old. This means that I grew up entirely in Belgium and got my education there, from kindergarten to university. However, last year I had the opportunity to move back to Armenia and work in the public service. And as a political scientist, you can only imagine how excited I was to be working in the government and to be interacting with people in the public sector. But I soon realized it wasn't going to be as easy as I thought or I hoped it would be. One example of this is a phone call that took place in my office at the Ministry of Education and Science between my colleague and an informatics teacher. And the call was going to be about the organization of a long-distance online class, but that, that's not what the conversation actually was about. I wasn't deliberately trying to listen to the conversation, but as I could sense the tone of my friend change and she was getting more frustrated, it all caught her attention. Because what happened next was the following. We listened to my colleague explain to this informatics teacher for a solid 20 minutes how to turn on Skype on her computer. <laughs> so we listened to my colleague tell her, put your mouse here, click on this window, wait for this page to load to have Skype running on her computer. And coming from Belgium, where the quality of education is so self-evident, I realized it was going to be a little bit more difficult than I wanted it to be. As I mentioned, I was working at the Ministry of Education and Science through an European project to improve the quality of higher education institutions here in Armenia. So I thought, OK, we have all the available information from the international community. We take their standards, we take their guidelines, we implement them in Armenia, and we hope that Armenia moves into the right direction. For example, the European Union has its trainings and education framework through which they support enrollment in education, and they pinpoint quality of education as one of their central goals. Next on, the United Nations dedicated their fourth sustainable development goal to this equal enrollment in primary, secondary, and tertiary education as an important vehicle for sustainable development. And we also have the World Bank. They have their Learning for All program through which they also focus on the access in education and quality. So it seems that for this international community, the quality of education is important, right? It's also the case for Armenia. And since I didn't get my education here, I'm not the one to judge, but I heard my fair share of stories from my friends and from my colleagues who did go to school and university here. And one story, or one example that always comes back, is example of professors at universities who are teaching the same content that they were teaching during the Soviet Union. So this means that this current generation that grew up with social media, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, is being thought the same things that our parents are being thought 30 or 40 years ago. It automatically raises questions in my head. Next on, we have these same professors who come in and who just read whatever is in front of them and leave. And it is the task of the students to take notes. And we take notes, I mean literally write down every single word because there's simply no syllabus. So, when I realized how big and how deep-rooted these problems and these examples are, I thought we needed to have a new perspective, because just taking the guidelines and standards from the international community wasn't just going to be enough. Because today, in Armenia, we see a very big brain drain, whereas brain circulation should be the motto of the country. We also see that we have a lot of higher education institutions operating. For a small country like Armenia, having more than 60 institutions, is it really necessary? and not to mention all the academic programs that come with all these institutions. And last on, we also have the linkage with the labor market, which I think is one of the biggest challenges, because we see that there are students graduating in fields that are no longer relevant for today's society. So this past year, we tried to develop a model based on key performance indicators and performance-based agreements to improve the quality of these higher education institutions. I'll give you an example of a country that uses this system to have a better understanding. Finland, for example, uh, funds their public higher education. They even pri fund their private education. And this funding is based on performance-based funding, which means that there is a contract between the Finnish government and the Finnish higher education institutions that contains very clear targets and very clear indicators that the higher education institutions have to reach. If they reach those goals, they get more funding which is a very good motivational factor because I think a lot of institutions are waiting for funding. It means that only the institutions that have performed well have received this funding. 
This means in Finland that there has been a less waste of public resources and a better resource allocation. Taking this model in Armenia, we can, for example, solve this problem of the linkage with the labor market. Because, let's say, the government decides that by 2025, we need to have 17,500 students graduating in a specific field in informatics. They set it out as one of the obje objectives, and it will, contain, it will be contained in one of the performance-based agreements, which is the contract between the government and the higher education institution. The higher education institutions have then to make an effort to reach these goals. For example, University A can say, of these 17,500, I will deliver 500. And they will have to do uh, their best to make their programs more attractive and apply innovative research methods so the program becomes more attractive for the students. So I'm explaining this and it seems simple, but it's really not. In order for this system to work in Armenia, there are pre three preconditions that have to be met and they have to be present at the same time. First of all, we need to have a strategy, and that's the most important one. We, we see in a lot of countries that the strategy for higher education is derived from an overall country strategy. But the thing is, in Armenia, we have these strategies. We have a development strategy, we have all kinds of documents saying what the goals and what the objectives are for this country, but we're simply not utilizing them. And they're also very vague and not really conceptualized. The problem is we have paid a lot of money for experts to come and write these uh, strategies and documents for us, for us just to simply thank them, put them away, and not use them anymore. So if you could have a clear strategy for the country through which we can have a clear strategy for higher education, we can go a far away. Next on, as I mentioned, this system is based on rewards. It means that the budget for higher education should be increased, because where are you going to get that funding for the higher education institutions? It means that the state has to be willing to increase the budget for education so that the higher education institutions can have more motivation and that they can finally realize which impact they actually have. And lastly, there also should be a willingness of the higher education institutions to cooperate and give up a little bit of their autonomy to move into the direction that the government wants. So for the past 10 minutes or so, I've been talking to you about education. There is a reason why education is so important to me. It is, it is the reason why my parents moved to Belgium 22 years ago. And I remember being a little kid in Belgium and listening to my parents justify to their Belgian friends why they moved. And they would always say that the collapse of the Soviet Union and the devastating uh, consequences that hit my hometown, Gyumri, no longer made it possible to ensure the quality of education because there was simply no infrastructure left. And even now, when I go to Gyumri, I still see the domics that remind us of what happened so many years ago. And I think it's a very clear representation of our country and the state of our higher education because we see what happened so many years ago, but we don't know how to solve it and we don't know how to get rid of it. But this past year, working in the public service, I have realized what an impact one person or a small group of people can have. And even if this impact is small, even if this impact is only on the short run, it's still impact. And I hope that many Armenians do come to Armenia, invest their time, invest their money in whichever sector they prefer. Because education shouldn't be the reason that Armenians leave this country. And altogether, Armenians shouldn't have any reason to leave at all. Thank you.